Welcome, everybody. It's great to see so many people here with us today. Um, we are still having people join us, so I'm going to give it another minute or so before we actually get started. We've got a great lineup of people to speak with us today about how to help youth quit vaping. Okay, there we go. And um, yes, wonderful. Okay, so we're going to get underway. I'm Rob Schwartz, and it's my pleasure to be moderating this session today. This is a session uh, about how to help youth quit vaping. Uh, we're going to introduce you some, to some great innovative uh, new apps uh, that have been developed uh, at the Ontario Tobacco Research Unit with colleagues. Um, and uh, we've got a great lineup of speakers to present uh, those apps to you. Uh, first of all, we would like to acknowledge this land on which we, we, we operate today. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still the home of many uh, Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful for the opportunity to work on this land. And I understand that many of you may be on different lands and on different territories. Um, and can acknowledge on your own the territories on which you're sitting today. Um, so it's a pleasure uh, to be able to uh, have this webinar on the youth vaping apps. Uh, this is uh, with funding uh, from uh, Health Canada's SUAP program that we've been able to develop these. Um, and um, we um, have a lineup of speakers uh, starting um, First with uh, Patrick Feng, who I will introduce. Patrick uh, is a faculty member at OCAD, the Ontario College of Art and Design, as well as with the Institute of Health Policy Management and Evaluation in the Dalalana School of Public Health at the University of Toronto. That's a mouthful, Patrick. Um, and uh, it's been a great opportunity for us to learn um, how design ideas can be brought in to co-design co apps. And indeed, Patrick's going to speak with us briefly uh, about the co-design approach that has been used to the development of these apps. Um, so, Patrick, um, you should be able to share your screen if you have slides or just speak. Go ahead. I think I'll just speak. I think uh, because you'll see the, the apps um, in uh, soon. Uh, but just to give you a sense, thank you for the kind introduction, Rob. It's really been fun working on this project because we've had a chance to work with uh, youth and uh, young adults who have been vaping and to engage them in the process of uh, both identifying issues uh, in terms of uh, you know trying to quit vaping and also thinking about possible solutions. So I'll just briefly uh, describe the approach that we used. And then if you have any questions, happy to talk about it later. Uh, essentially what we started, co-design was built into the very beginnings of this project. And we thank you to Michael and Bruce and, the, and Cheryl and the others who have kind of really championed that, um, to wanting to not just um, take uh, interventions from the literature, but also to pair what we know from the literature with uh, the lived experience of people who are, um, are vaping and uh, especially young adults who maybe face particular challenges or issues when they are seeking out uh, supports for vaping cessation. And so what we did was we organized a number of what we call uh, co-design workshops where we invited uh, youth who were um, actively vaping or had experience with vaping to join us to talk about um, their experiences and through a number of facilitated exercises, uh, got them to open up about how they felt when they were vaping, the triggers and the kind of 
emotional uh, feelings related to that activity, when they felt that the, you know, they could take a break, um, how imagining what it would look like in different social scenarios, and also asking them to actively think about and give us feedback on uh, a number of ideas for interventions. One of which you'll see is the Crush the Crave app, and then two other kind of uh, interventions that really came out of uh, the brainstorming we did with these youth. So it was really fun. We originally had planned this to be in person um, because typically when we have a, a design workshop, we bring a bunch of people physically into the same space. Uh, they get to know each other and we work with models or with uh, um, drawings and pictures to kind of uh, brainstorm interactively, but because of COVID, we had to switch it online. And so that was uh, itself uh, quite a learning experience about switching to that perspective. Um, and so I think uh, I will kind of leave it there. I'm sure if you have more questions, I'm sure everyone's heard about code design, but if you have more questions about specifically what we did, um, I guess what I will say that like specifically what we did was we had engaged, ended up engaging two groups uh, of youth. Um, so one kind of older uh, young adults kind of from 19 to 29 who were in a synchronous online workshop uh, over two days. So that's kind of um, uh, built quite similar to how we would run a live uh, workshop in person. And then a second group for younger adults, 16 to 18, we engaged them in an asynchronous uh, model where we interacted them uh, at three separate points in time over a span of about two weeks and gave them prompts and activities to respond to in between those sessions. So those were the kind of main co-design activities. And I will pass it over, I think. Um, yeah, it's back to me. Pass it back to Rob. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Patrick. That's a great introduction. Um, and I just posted a short note in the comments saying what an eye opener it was for me to be working in this way. It was a first for me to be doing the, uh, the co-design uh, work. And uh, I have to say that I'm not going back. If I ever have opportunity to uh, work on designing an intervention again, I know where to come to for help, Patrick. Uh, so um, it, it, it also in terms of research, uh, just there's a huge amount to be learned. Uh, it's like there's two silos. There's the design people and there's the research people. Um, and the design people have all kinds of cool ways of collecting information and analyzing data that I never knew about. Uh, so now um, uh, we know some of that. I'm delighted now to introduce my colleague, uh, Bruce Baskerville. Um, Bruce is currently at CIHR, but um, he was formerly at the University of Waterloo. And he's really the progenitor of the ideas for this project um, and indeed the, the primary app. Uh, that we have been uh, developing or adapting is based on an app that he developed for smoking cessation while at the University of Waterloo. So Bruce, please take it away. Thanks very much, Rob. Um, I'm hoping everyone can see a screen with an introductory slide on it. Uh, yes, we can. Very good. Uh, yes, thanks very much. And um, I wanted to give everyone a bit of a quick intro to Crush the Crave. Unlike uh, the other two apps we're going to share with you today, uh, Crush the Crave was a redevelopment of an older app that was built for smoking cessation. Um, so um, CTC, or Crush the Crave, is basically a tracker type app that awards abstinence and was launched in 2014. And it's been assessed independently by third parties as having scores of 95% and 82% on ease of use and engagement as well as having addressed four out of five uh, established behavior change strategies, such things as rewarding abstinence, advising on changing routines, coping with cravings, et cetera. Uh, back in 2018, uh, we published a, a randomized control trial where Crush the Crave had achieved a 30-day point prevalence abstinence of about 24% at six months. And a number of qualitative studies were also run at that time on the affordances of Crush the Crave. And that was the work of uh, Dr. Laura Struick uh, who's undertaking her PhD at the time. Uh, 
as Patrick was saying, last year we conducted online VAPAX with youth, and that revealed a number of affordances that a vaping cessation app could provide, such as in-app social support and uh, adaptive reminders and push notifications. So the research team and Choreatic Design, who were the consulting group that came on to help us redo Crush the Crave, uh, we updated the look and feel of it including new icons. We created a whole basket of new supportive messages dealing with craving and vaping. And uh, Cheryl Sanchez did a fantastic job ensuring that those messages were as evidence-based as possible based on the latest uh, literature around vaping. Um, we ended up adapting a number of the formula that make up Crush the Crave because we wanted to tailor the messaging towards vaping, the calculators that were involved, awards and push notifications. Uh, we adapted the questions for quit plan development to reflect vaping cessation rather than smoking cessation. Um, you have three options to quit with Crush the Crave. You can quit immediately, you can quit at some point in the future, or you can simply just track your behavior, which was new. We didn't have that before. Now you can just simply track what's going on to learn about your uh, vaping experiences and, and cravings, et cetera. And we did a lot of work to integrate the latest help information we could find into Crush the Crave that related to vaping. We've also updated the admin functions that are associated with Crush the Crave. Crush the Wave Crave gives uh, notifications when one um, receives an award, for example, for, for being vape free for a month. Uh, but you can also send a notification um, or push a notification out to users. But let's say there's a new vaping cessation resource that's opened up and you want uh, the community to know about it, you can put in a, a push notification just for that and everyone's made aware of that new service. So at this point in time, both the Android and iOS versions uh, are planned to be available on the Apple and Android platforms within the next week. We're just wrapping up the uh, iOS version and hopefully have those online for people to download by, by next week. I'm now going to give a, a demo of Crush the Crave in real time. Just bear with me as I share the, the right screen with everyone. You should now see a, a screen that is basically a home screen of the app itself. Yeah, we've got it, Chris. Very good. Um, okay, so what when you first log in to Crush the Crave, you obviously get an informed consent screen because uh, you're part of a research study that's going on at University of Toronto in OTRU. And from there, you're asked a very few questions. And those questions have to do with uh, your vaping behavior. So how many uh, times a day do you vape? Uh, how many uh, days does it take to use a pod or a refill? And what the cost of that pod or refill is? Those questions are used to help uh, do the tracking within the app. You're also asked questions about your quit plan. When do you want to quit now? Do you want to quit in the future? Or you just want to simply track your behavior? You also have the option to personalize the app. And as this home screen is showing, I have a, a default affirmation that comes with the app. I'm quitting for my health. But you can type in your own. You can also upload your own photos at the time that you log in. In this case, these are the default photos we have in the app at the moment but you get all that personalization done and then you have your, your home screen. And as we said earlier, it's a tracking type app. So you simply track your behavior. So in the case of craving, I hit the crave button and I get a message that helps me deal with the craving. Exercise can reduce stress and keep your weight down. It also makes you feel good and improves your health. And we have a whole uh, new set of icons that are associated with each of these messages. Um, it also provides you a little bit of feedback on this screen in terms of how long you've been vape free and how much money you've saved. I just came on as a new user a few days ago, so I haven't saved very much, but it's telling me that I'm on track. And you, at this point, because we know that uh, managing cravings is important, you have a distract option, uh, various types of distractions, games, videos, music. Um, we've for example, music, we're talking about research that shows that music can alter moods and help change behaviors by serving as a supportive function. We're not linking to music or videos, et cetera, that are on the person's smartphone. We're suggesting they go and listen to their own music that could be off other devices, et cetera. The same thing with videos. 
if you hit the vape button, you get another icon and a different message. Uh, given that I've elected to quit vaping five days ago, it's telling me you have choices about how to deal with stress. Vaping is not the only way. Check out the Crave Crushers page for more info. So I'll show you that page a little later. One of the options that's built into this app, um, and it's taken from the old version of Crush the Crave as well, is tracking or recording triggers. So the app gives you the option to indicate who you're vaping with, could be with friends. You can also add your own. There's an option to input another uh, um, category, um, but I'm picking friends and where am I? I'm at school and how am I feeling? I'm feeling fine. And you can pick other options if you like or, or type in your own. You save those triggers and then you can actually look at your triggers and you'll get feedback on what are your most prevalent triggers. So I, in this case, I tend to vape most often in the morning with friends at school when I'm feeling stressed. So the, the idea is you use that information and it's explained later on in the, in the quit help uh, uh, section of the app to try and modify your behavior as best you can. Um, the other thing that's built into this app are virtual awards, and we've revamped these to be uh, associated with uh, the vaping phenomena. You have um, awards based on how many days you've been vape free. Uh, we have awards based on how many things, how many times you've not vaped. You've got money saved, and you have you earn your own. So I've achieved three awards so far. I've been vape free for five days. Day one. This is what the award looks like. It, it's obtained when you're completely vape free for one day. It congratulate, congratulates you and it lets you share the award if you want with uh, friends, et cetera, via social media channels. That's optional. It doesn't have to happen. Um, the icons slowly unlock as time goes on. Right now I'm in line to, to achieve three more and these are already locked. There's vaping tracker. This is a tame when you keep track of your vaping cravings for three days in a row, et cetera. As I said earlier, the, VAP does, the app does give push notifications. I've been receiving those almost every day since I've been using it for the last five days. It tells you when you've achieved an award, reminds you to keep on using the app to track your behavior and achieve uh, some success. Um, there's also interactive rewards such as night out, this award's triggered when you um, decide to start it, and the goal is to remain vape-free for an entire night out. And if you've achieved that, you, you earn the virtual award and you can share it with friends or family, et cetera. Uh, progress. There's progress trackers. Uh, we have a simple line graph that sort of shows uh, your, the, when you vape, what days are the most frequent. You can also break it down by hour showing you hours of vaping by day or by hour. There's also a health calculators page. Here we've got the basic uh, cumulative uh, tallies in terms of numbers of days vape free, a number of times not vaped, um, how many pods you've averted, et cetera, money saved, money on, to say, on track to save during the year and when you're most vulnerable. You can also look at your triggers again if you want to. So those, that's the progress page. And then we have the quit help page. And one of the things that is unique about Crush the Crave, because Cheryl has done a, um, a review of the content of a number of apps that are available on Google Play and iTunes, and they don't very often link to a quit line. So we've built that into, into the app itself, encouraging people to reach out to a quit coach if they need it. And they just click on the button and they, they link to their quit line. Distract the Crave is very similar to what's already under the Crave button, the same distractions. Online resources, right now we're linking to the web pages of the Government of Canada, the Canadian Cancer Society, and the Lung Association, and the information they're providing on, on vaping and quitting vaping. And there's an opportunity to add even more resources here and when, we, when we need to. Um, Crave Crushers, it's referenced in the, um, in the messaging. And this is just uh, an option encouraging people to do different things when they're craving a vape. Uh, slow down and enjoy the day, do not rush, drink more water, get outside, all kinds of different uh, ideas are expressed here and people can be creative and come up with their own. It's also encouraging people if they, based on the money they've saved to go out, take, take in a movie, a restaurant, 
like that. And we've also got a button that encourages physical exercise as a way of dealing with craving and vaping. And it lists a number of reasons why that's a good idea and to go do it. Uh, the other thing that we've got is crave, crave control. A lot of the messaging comes up and talks about how to handle triggers, uh, handling slips, withdrawal and cravings. And those messages encourage people to go to this section and, and get advice. So if you hit on the handling tri triggers, I already learned from my tracking of triggers that the one of the places that I'm most likely to vape is at school. So here it's giving some advice about avoiding vaping areas, uh, don't socialize or socialize with non-vapers, plan healthy breaks and learn, and learn ways to control stress. Um, and they're suggesting to go to the Crave Truckers, uh, Crave Crushers to, to learn about that. Uh, finally, a little bit about weight gain. This is taken from the old version of Crush the Crave 2. We know that uh, nicotine has an effect on metabolism. So there might be some uh, gaining of weight, but it's minimal as a consequence of uh, quitting vaping. And there's some advice on how to deal with that. And so the last thing is the quit plan. This is just a reminder of what your quit plan was. And as I said earlier, there's three different ways of quitting. This just gives you a quick summary of what your quick plan is and some encouragement to, to keep, with, keep with your plan. The last thing in the app is the more button. And this button provides um, several options. Uh, one of them is the my map feature. My map simply plots your vaping and craving with icons. I have to apologize for some reason the icons aren't displaying this morning. But what would happen is you'd see a bunch of red dots on the map indicating where you're vaping and where you're craving. And that function does work. It's not working this morning for some reason, but uh, that's what the intent is behind there. Sort of geotagging, giving more information about the triggers for, for smoking. Uh, we also have a how to use uh, feature where we just uh, provide information about how to use the app that the Crave and Vape buttons are for, recording your triggers, et cetera. And there's a My Settings button. This is an important one. This is where if you've slipped up or you're back to vaping, you can reset your quit plan or your vaping status and uh, try again. We Messaging is encouraging people to try again when they've slipped up. Um, and there's also the personalization feature. So if you wanted to change your affirmation or upload new uh, photos that are inspiring to you for some reason, you can click that button and do it. Um, okay, that's... That's the demo for, for Crush the Crave. Um, I just wanna quickly talk about what our next steps are and what we're gonna be doing uh, very soon is running uh, some additional focus groups with youth to get their feedback on what they think about the latest version of Crush the Crave. And we'll consider incorporating that feedback uh, into uh, the next iteration. Um, we are going to be evaluating Crush the Crave along with uh, the other two apps that have been developed um, using the, the large cohort that Michael Chayton is spearheading of vapors, you know, you know, randomly assigning a certain portion of those to this Crush the Crave app and seeing what happens over time. And what we hope to do based on those learnings is continue to incorporate uh, features that came out of our our vape hack that we haven't had a chance to do yet. So such things as, as a adaptation, allowing users to adapt the color schemes uh, to accommodate their user preferences in a greater way, maybe incorporating some slider features to make that really easy to adapt the content. Uh, social support is very important. Crush the Cray was, was developed used on, based on principles of persuasive technology. And we've got task support and dialogue support. Uh, we need to think about how best to implement social support with the app. Uh, we wanna augment some of the features in the app again. One of the things that we're thinking of doing for the future are adaptations around awards. For example, we could have an award that is associated with nicotine reduced um, rather than um, number of vapes not uh, vaped, et cetera. Um, so that's our plan for the future, and I'll, I'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much. Excellent, Bruce. That's fantastic. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are a couple of uh, questions in the chat, particularly about privacy, and uh, specifically regarding the geo mapping. Um, so I don't know if you're able to address that quickly. There's a question of whether the my map info is based on user info inputs or is auto tracked. 
as part of an app like Google Maps? Yeah, the, the it's currently auto tracked. <clears throat> there is an option to turn that off. You don't have to have it uh, happening, um, but it is auto tracked. It's sort of like an ecological momentary assessment approach to get an understanding of where people are actually vaping. Um, and, but the primary intent is to give feedback to the user. If, if they're not already aware of what their vaping status is, they can quickly look at this map and, and see where it's happening. And for some people, based on the focus groups that we've had in the past, that's been informative. They were sort of unaware that they tended to be vaping most at a certain friend's house or whatever. And so that can be helpful as, they, if they're, as they're trying to work on their, on their quit plan. Yes, but right now there's an option for them not to, to turn that on um, under the settings features, but uh, it's happening automatically every time they vape or crave. Okay, there are, we're not gonna take all the questions now. We'll take one more, question, uh, one more of these chat questions now, and then we're gonna continue the presentation and loop back to the questions afterward. Um, but uh, there is a question about whether the app uh, is going to track the percentage nicotine vapes and then reduced. Is that a rewardable variable? Yeah, that's planned for the future. We haven't incorporated it yet. <clears throat> it did come up in our, our vape hack, as I was saying at the end of the presentation. So we've been thinking about how best to do that. Um, there are some key differences between smoking and vaping, and there's nicotine content varies from device to device. So we've been trying to figure that out as to how to make it as accurate as possible. Um, but we haven't implemented that yet. Okay, that's great. Well, I'll come back to the rest of the correct questions, so keep them coming. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Cheryl Sanchez. Uh, Cheryl is the research coordinator for this project. She's also a second year PhD student at the Institute of Medical Sciences at U of T. And uh, she's also, she's doing a collaborative specialization in addiction studies. As part of her PhD research, she is evaluating the impact of approaches to youth co-design and engagement processes in this study and beyond. So Cheryl, uh, take it away. Thank you, Rob. I will now start sharing my screen. Um, let me know if that's visible now. Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so um, Crush the Crave, thank, thank you, Bruce, for that presentation. So for just a quick overview for the project, for this Health Canada project, for Crush the Crave, we've always known that we were going to do Crush the Crave um, and we were going to adapt it for vaping because of the many great works that Bruce and his, his team has already done on Crush the Crave. But we also had room for um, open-ended interventions that would come out of all of the um, other activities that we had done with youth, like focus groups and design research events. So we have two additional interventions that were identified from that process. And one of them is uh, a smartphone app that is currently available on the App Store that's called the Stop Vaping Challenge. Um, so that's what I'll be presenting on. So I'll do a quick background on the development process and the objectives of the app. Um, and then quickly move into what the app looks like, what the app is in a nutshell, key features and the concept of a stop vaping challenge. And finally, just a brief overview of um, where it came from. Okay, so for um, the development of the intervention, we had done focus groups um, with a total of 41 young people um, ages 16 to 29. The focus groups with uh, youth who are ages 16 to 18, those were separate um, among only youth ages 16 to 18. Um, and also there's some, from the focus groups, we uh, identified barriers and facilitators to uh, vaping cessation among youth. And one of the key barriers is a lack of self-awareness of vaping behaviors. Um, since then, when we did this in September 2019, there's not, there wasn't a lot in the literature, but since then there are a couple of groups now that are um, have found a similar finding um, in terms of this lack of self-awareness of vaping behaviors. And then we also, as part of the development or the co-design process, we had um, a design research event called Vape Hack that Bruce and Patrick has already discussed. 
um, in the asynchronous design research event with youth ages 16 to 18, we had the opportunity to do a pilot of um, the Stop Vaping Challenge among 21 youth. So this entailed them recording themselves um, after trying to not vape for as long as they can. So it was, it was very interesting to see those um, youth perspectives um, that they narrate with their own words using their own devices. And so for objectives, there are really two things about Stop Vaping Challenge. One is it's, a it's, a, it's an intervention tool in aiding non-smoking youth quit vaping. And it's also sim simultaneously a research tool in helping us understand the process of vaping cessation among youth. And I'm hoping to be able to clarify what that means in the next few slides. So the, this app is available right now. If you have time to look over it and send this feedback, please feel free to do so. Um, it's both on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. So both for Apple and Android devices. So when you go to the app profile of the Stop Vaping Challenge app on the online stores, there's a brief um, explanation of what the challenge is. Um, starting with, you know, the concept that it's quite simple. It basically is a timer. So you start the timer and then you go for as long as you can without vaping. And through that process, you receive notifications and reminders to check in regularly by entering information about your mood that day or for that period of time. Um, also information about your cravings. and um, some of those are prompted, um, uh, it, it, they're triggered in, at certain periods of time. And there's also a logic, a rationale, a research rationale behind why those periods of time. Um, and then if you vape, uh, you click stop the challenge. And that means there was um, a relapse. So you had started vaping again, or you vaped once. Um, and then a, a research a survey pops up. Uh, so you can describe what was happening when you had vaped again. Uh, and then in that process also, you can earn badges um, as achievements, just like um, in Crush the Crave. And you can also challenge your friends. Uh, these are some of the other features. So like I said, this is what it looks like. So there's a stop challenge button and this timer will keep on going. So every time you open the app, this screenshot on the left on my left is what you'll see um so it's just it, it's a timer that runs all throughout until you stop it when you do vape and then here on the right you have your achievements and then in the tab next to achievements you see your requests from friends and this is the page on um, mood and craving. So again, there are some set times that we do ask for, we do prompt the user to enter their mood and craving information, but they can also do this spontaneously anytime they want. And so here, mood and craving. And then once you have enough, once you've entered enough entries for mood and craving, you can look at that um, in the My Progress tab. So it's a separate tab where you can check where your progress has been. After going back to the entries for mood and craving, every time you enter one, you have the option of entering a memory. So when you enter a mood or a craving information or data point, uh, a screen pops up that um, asks if you're interested in recording a video or taking a photo, which will then be um, saved in the memory tab so that you can look at that um, every time. It's really for the user to be able to go back and then check on what their progress has been. Um, and then the other part of um, Stop Vaping Challenge that is key for it being a research tool is are the, uh, the surveys that are um, embedded in the app. So every time a user vapes or stops a challenge, a survey will pop up 
where they can enter information about the who, what, when, where, and why they had vaped. And this is, um, this is, we're really hoping that this is the data that we can use to understand what it means to stop vaping or the process of vaping cessation for young people. Um, for the evidence base, again, so we had done um, a series of focus groups where this particular, um, this particular concept of a lack of self-awareness of vaping behaviors was identified as a key barrier to vaping cessation. So it was really rooted in this idea that vaping is not discrete, uh, is discrete as an activity. So there's no unit of delivery like in cigarettes. So potentially, um, and we did hear this from the, the focus group participants, you could be vaping all day uh, if, if that's something that you're doing. And we heard all sorts of um, ideas, all sorts of practices or behaviors that youth were doing where they're vaping in the shower, <laughs> on the TTC, um, while watching Netflix. And we do a lot of those these days. So just vaping um, with very little idea of how much they're vaping, of when they're vaping, of who they're vaping with the most. So this, um, this intervention, the Stop Vaping Challenge app, is really a response to this key finding from the focus groups. And since then, there's been some literature on vaping cessation intervention research. Um, if you haven't yet, I especially will urge you to look into the special issue that was published in Addictive Behaviors. This is where we had published our paper on the focus groups. It's called the Development and Evaluation of Novel Youth E-Cigarette Prevention and Cessation Programs. And again, we also have um, pilot data from 21 youth um, from the, from the um, asynchronous youth diary study that we conducted last year. Um, Finally, um, so for step two, go for as long as you can without vaping. So Stop Vaping Challenge is also, can also be called an abstinence challenge. Um, so it's been um, identified clinically as a um, way or a strategy to encourage youth to try um, stopping vaping for a limited period of time, um, which then will reveal um, insights and experiences um, to the youth if, if, if the challenge itself proves to be more difficult than expected. This is um, all of my references that was mentioned here. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Excellent, thank you, Cheryl. So that's two apps down and one to go. Um, I'm not seeing any specific questions in the chat right now for you, Cheryl, but I'm sure more will come up and maybe it's just also clear that there's no need. Um, so it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, my colleague, Michael Chaitin. Uh, Michael is a scientist at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in the Institute for Mental Health Policy Research. He is also the Director of Research at the Ontario Tobacco Research Unit and a faculty member at the University of Toronto. And uh, he's my partner in crime in many uh, ventures. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to introduce Michael, who's going to speak today about the third app, which is called Nod from 2050. Go for it. Hello. Vaping cessation is a new phenomenon. It's something that we haven't needed to address uh, until the last couple of years where we started to see people who were uh, non-smokers or never smokers who are now facing challenges uh, and expressing desires to quit vaping and having difficulties in doing so. Many of our interventions uh, for vaping are uh, consistent with other uh, theories of behavior change uh, that, as, uh, as Bruce noted, that uh, his interventions of the behaviors uh, uh, um, uh, processes in that app are consistent between vaping and smoking. And uh, in generally across a whole range of behavior changes uh, from exercise to healthy eating, uh, we use a consistent toolbox of uh, similar methodologies for helping people change their behaviors. 
This app is uh, focuses on a slightly different aspect of behavior change than uh, than than our traditional uh, quit smoking apps such as uh, Crush the Crave. And this focuses on this idea and this question of what if, what if we could express gratitude for the good choices that our younger self made? And what would you say to your younger self if you had that opportunity to thank them for making those changes that made you healthy, uh, made you happy uh, in the future? We understand that for each individual, we know what inspires us. We know what our goals are going to be, or once we deeply consider them, we, we understand what we would want to achieve in the future. And the challenge of, of interventions, of digital interventions and otherwise, is not to tell people what they want to do, but to get them to reflect on the decisions and the choices that they would like to make. One of the core challenges with all behavior change interventions, or most of them anyways, and it's specifically about vaping, is that the benefits happen in the present. The, uh, the psychoactive effects, the uh, stress relief, uh, apparent stress relief, uh, the, uh, the, the, the social activities are in the present, are in the now, the relief of withdrawal. But the costs of addiction are much harder to bear in the future. And this means making that behavior change that trying to quit vaping is really a gift from to your older self from and it, while experiencing the, the challenges in the present. So the purposes of app that, this app then is how do we connect with our future selves? What can we do to uh, understand how happy we will be that we have made the ch uh, changes that might be difficult in the uh, present to be able to uh, impact uh, our, our um, to be able to uh, benefit ourselves in the future. We took our cue uh, from the design principle and, and from the, the field of futurism. Um, and uh, this quote from the futurist Peter Hayward really emphasizes this, that rather than accepting the default future of what will be, will be, there is the possibility of considering what possible futures we wish to live in. And in taking steps in the present to increase the likelihood of a desired futures and reduce the likelihood of undesired As part of our uh, uh, vape hack, we 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 went through some of these processes, and uh, this is some of the examples of what we what what the youth came up with um, for this idea of uh, uh, looking to the future, and specifically uh, a technique and uh, called postcards from the future, where you write a, a letter from your future self. Uh, and try to put yourself in the position of what you would like to be in the future. Uh, we would had it based on a Google form where there are essentially a, a simple postcard where there were motivations and instructive messages that you could write. Um, and the front of the postcard where they could put images of, that they would find motivational. Um, and for this activity, we just asked them to go on the internet and, and, and find any, uh, it, any images that they thought would motivate them. And so these are some of the examples that uh, the youth came up with. This is a summary slide from our, our graphic designer who participated uh, in um, a graphic recorder who participated in the event to record sort of the, the overall experiences that were shared by the youth during this activity. Um, and primarily there were a bunch of, uh, a number of different uh, of motivational messages, uh, uh, things about uh, being free and regaining your own power, enjoying life, uh, being able to be healthy in the future, breathing freely, uh, some specific aspects about, uh, you know, the waste or uh, concerns about the device itself and generally about wanting to be healthier in the future. And so from this information, we built uh, a, a, a new site with, uh, with our designer, uh, Maggie Grayson, um, and the app team at um, uh, uh, Firewater Burns, a website uh, that is accessible, again, on mobile devices, but also just on, on computers, 
to be able to uh, participate, for everyone to be able to participate in this kind of design activity uh, called Nod from 2050. And the uh, concept of this website is that the year is uh, 2050 and that you have not needed nicotine for years now. Uh, and so you send yourself a postcard from the future uh, for those who, uh, for, to when you have made the decision to quit vaping. So uh, for, if you, if you go there today, it will say that today is December, uh, or it is October 19th, 2050. It's the morning and you've just woken up. Your life is good. You've accomplished many goals and set some new ones too. The younger you took the right step to get you uh, here, one of which was to quit vaping and send a nod of gratitude to your younger you. And this uh, website allows you to create that postcard. Uh, we have a number of options that uh, but you can either uh, give us uh, uh, impressions. So what inspires you? Um, we have a whole host of um, uh, of, of options here of, of what kinds of things might inspire. Um, and they can use that to sort of fill in the blanks of, of what it might be that you can use to adapt. Uh, if you're not interested in us guiding you, uh, you can fill in any messages. I think you may have noticed already that uh, this entire presentation was actually created with this with uh, this website, that uh, that it, it, it allows you to design your own messages in the ways that you want, want to with uh, with the host of tools to uh, create uh, um, uh, the, the meaning uh, that you desire. It is essentially an on-demand co-design workshop that individuals can use at any point in time to be able to uh, uh, work through some of this, this process of self-reflection um, that, uh, it, that it, you can evaluate uh, your and think about, empathize with your future self and be able to create that experience that you might have in a focus group or um, at a design event or in a, in a group um, quickly, easily, and uh, it, with a, an, an attractive framework. The principle behind here is that it's guiding and not dictating. We are not telling people to quit smoking. We're not nagging them uh, that this is bad. It's just providing a space to reflect and providing a space that allows them to create their own future and they're given their own choices. It is easier to change now uh, rather, in, rather than at any point in the future, but that change now is the benefit of your future self and not your present and requires putting yourself in the shoes of uh, uh, and deciding to make that change really means connecting uh, into the future. It's important to note that the target audience for both this and all of the interventions here are non-smoking, non-cigarette smoking youth and young adults that are concerned about their vaping. Vaping, uh, 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 vaping itself is a relatively new phenomenon. And the process of dependence is actually one that takes many years to, to fully develop. That when we, uh, the, the, the people who have most difficulty in making behavior changes are those who have done it for 10, 20, 30 years. Um, and there just haven't been that many people who uh, have even two or three or four years of vaping yet. Um, and so I think this will be a, uh, an issue that will emerge more into the future um, as people have been vaping longer. Um, and, but there are currently youth now who do express a desire to change and, uh, 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 and uh, uh, difficulty in doing so. The other important thing to note is we don't want to in interfere into smoking cessation, and that's why all of these interventions are uh, not connected with uh, a broad uh, tobacco cessation programming. There's the specific to vaping. Um, that uh, uh, that vaping can be a way of helping people quit smoking, and we don't want to interfere in that process. But there are many never smoking or non-smoking youth who uh, who are having those challenges currently. This site allows you to create these postcards. 
um, and then share with with others. Uh, it it uh, you will we'll send you uh, the the postcard to your email, um, and you can uh, share it on social media. Um, and you can also uh, it, they're actually well sized. I currently have mine um, as a well as a lock screen on my phone, um, and they're 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 well sized to be able to carry these messages with you as you need. And we hope that the process itself of designing is a fun one that people will like to engage in, even if they're not just to think about uh, not currently interested in quitting, but just to consider uh, um, both vaping and other sort of behavior changes that they may be interested to make in the future. Uh, we think that this model may work beyond vaping uh, broadly to, uh, uh, to as an introduction uh, to other behavior changes. Finally, we then link to uh, to our website where people can then, if they make the decision to quit, um, um, that they have other resources there like Crush the Crave that will help them work through the process more directly. So uh, I hope uh, that uh, you're uh, in interested in this and uh, the website is now available online, uh, not from 2050.ca uh, and is available for, for use or, or and, and sharing with all. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, this is so super cool. I mean, beyond anything I ever thought would come out of the Ontario Tobacco Research Unit. So uh, I'm delighted and really excited uh, about this. and. I hope that those in the audience uh, share our excitement for all of these apps. Uh, it's been a wonderful journey uh, getting to where we are. Uh, we're still on the journey. We're doing research. We're finalizing the apps. As you can see, a couple are available. We haven't advertised them yet, uh, but uh, people are picking them up and downloading them and uh, starting to use them. So that's really fun. Um, there were a couple of questions in the chat earlier on. Um, I remember one was about vaping of cannabis, to what extent this came up and to what extent do we address it in these apps. So that's open for any of the panelists to answer. It, it certainly came up um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that they're both in a couple of ways. I mean, one, there's, there's is definitely a measurement issue here, uh, I think, in, in, in surveys. And when you ask people, uh, many people about vaping, uh, they don't distinguish particularly between uh, vaping cannabis and uh, nicotine. Um, that uh, it, that was part of our, our challenges, and in doing some of the wording around nod, it's like what do we what do we say around vaping? We can't just say can't just say vaping. You have to vaping of, of, of what? Um, there, I think Cheryl has a sort of host of of, of other uh, uh, comments that people made around specifically the the sort of the interaction between vaping nicotine and vaping cannabis. Too. Yeah, um, definitely. Off the top of my head, I remember um, this narrative. It wasn't um, it wasn't a, a dominant theme, but this narrative of a that sounded to me like a a harm continuum where they some youth, a few of them, were considering quitting vaping with nicotine through vaping with cannabis. It's very interesting. <laughs> Um, so that's one. Um, there, there, there are others that I can't recall right now. Thank you. Uh, there were also a couple of earlier questions about, uh, you know, why people are vaping, you know, to, uh, you know, this part of their socialization, uh, what they're doing in high school. And I think behind some of this, uh, some of these comments is the notion, you know, are young people really interested in quitting uh, vaping? Um, and so, Michael, in one of your last slides, you noted that uh, you know, these, or at least that app, but I think all of them are intended for people who are interested uh, in, who are concerned about their vaping at least, and may want to think about, uh, about that. So perhaps we can enlighten uh, the participants with some information about what came out in the research that we've done so far about people's uh, thoughts about quitting vaping. So I, I, there are yeah. a, a important couple of points to make, and, and one is that in our in our other cohort study of the regular vapors um, of, of never smoking uh, a, a regular vapors, uh, sixty five percent of them are I say that they're uh, addicted to um, addicted to vaping. So that's their, their self reported perception of 
uh, of their behavior. And a significant portion of those identify that they will have intentions to quit in either the short or the near future, that they're that this is something that is uh, concerning to them. This is not so these are we also then um, as part of our focus groups, one of our, our challenges we really went and recruited people who were um, who were actually interested in quitting or had tried to quit as well. So people who were sort of further down that pathway than uh, most people in the in the in, in the cohort. And I think the, the the important thing to note is that those people are real and they do exist. Uh, and we've talked to them uh, that, uh, you know, that, that there are those who do have challenges in trying to quit, who are concerned um, and, you know, and, and some of whom who, when they reflect on their uh, uh, on, on what's happening, um, are concerned about it. That uh, the process of the stop vaping challenge, in particular, was the recognition of how much of their lives was devoted in order to seeking nicotine. How much they were changing their behaviors, changing what they did in order to to use uh, uh, to vape instead of seeing their friends, instead of. Uh, um, uh, engaging in other activities, or or um, or by hiding from their parents or schools, or so or so forth. So um, that process of self recognition, which is really challenging for for vaping, was something that um, uh, that did come up. Great, Patrick, your hand it up. Did you want to comment? Yeah, you know, just to add on to that, I just want to share some of the um, findings from the study where we did it asynchronously. So this was with young adults, 16 to 18 teenagers, essentially. And one of the really fascinating little uh, bits that came out was how their perceptions really changed in terms of age. So uh, several of them talked about, like, it's cool that we vape, but older people, that's kind of weird. And young people, I feel sorry for them. You know, like, it's like, but what I'm doing is fine. And it gets to this idea, I think, of perspective, which is that, you know, like they don't see themselves as never wanting to quit. They just kind of assume they'll quit at some point. Um, and so one of the quotes was like, it's always weird seeing people in their 30s and up vape. It makes me think they're just weird, like trying to fit in with the kids. It makes them look creepy. And so, you know, these are teenagers saying this. Um, so I do think that like even if they weren't articulating a des immediate desire to quit, they had this kind of notion that this is just a fad, right? I won't be doing that when I'm 30, but no plan on how to do that. And I think the beauty of something like the nod from 2050, the postcards from the future is like to try to um, provide a little uh, prompt around that, like, you know, to think about what it would look like getting a message from the future and what you would have to do to kind of make your way in that direction. Great, thank you, Bruce. Uh, yes, thanks, Rob. Just to quickly build on what Patrick was saying, um, again, from the VAPAC that we had last year, uh, uh, unlike the old version of Press the Prey for smoking cessation, we clearly heard uh, from youth that, that they weren't really ready to quit. They weren't contemplating quit quitting. Lots of questions around what are the consequences of vaping, uh, et cetera. But clearly we're seeing, uh, as, as Mike, Michael was saying, a lot of evidence of addiction. And so a lot of uh, vaping cessation apps are coming into play. So as a consequence, what we did to crush the grave was incorporate a feature where they don't have to pick uh, a quit date or decide that they're quitting now. They can simply track their behavior and hopefully learn more about how frequently they're vaping, where they're vaping, and then form a realization that maybe I need, I need to take the next step. This is too much. I'm spending too much money. I'm vaping too much. Um, etc. So we that's what we tried to do to modify Crush the Crave to build on what we learned from the VAPAC. Yeah, thank you all. So there's a question, did the participating youth realize that it's an addiction in addition to being a fad? So I mean, I can just building on some of the comments made and what I remember from the research that was done. Yeah, I mean, they're, and they're sort of angry at themselves or at the people who sell the vapes uh, that they are in the state of uh, like needing the nicotine. They may not use the word addiction or, or dependence, but their description to their experiences uh, do suggest that. Um, um, there was a question about, you know, are we, have we launched this or advertised it in any way? 
No, not yet, um, but uh, we would like to ask you to help us do that. Uh, we will be uh, launching and uh, actually having the promotion campaign uh, of sorts, uh, but we would love for each of you here to share uh, what we have presented uh, today. Um, we um, have posted the links uh, uh, to it. You can find the Vaping Challenge app in the app stores, uh, the link uh, for the postcards uh, from 2050 uh, is in the chat posted. Um, maybe we can post it again. Um, the Crusted Crave isn't yet available, but will be very soon, um, as I remember, on both the Android and the uh, Apple stores. And Cheryl is posting some of the uh, links right now, which is great. Um, there we go. Um, so please do share uh, broadly. And uh, we, yeah, we can share the slides. Uh, absolutely. Um, I think just send an email uh, to, um, um, well, you can send it to um, otrue.org. Um, um, or Cheryl, maybe you want to post a, an email address uh, for people to ask about and uh, the apps are get, uh, just checking with my colleagues i believe they will all be available in french so not yet so this is a part of our these are all no. uh, sort of beta products and we're looking uh we're we're looking to essentially uh uh, uh hang them over in some ways as well, that we are a research team um, and we have some research uh, interest in, in continuing on the lawn in the near future. Um, and then are, are interested in both in freely sharing them or having them for other people participate in using them. Um, and so hopefully as well, that includes translation into French. Um, the, the, yeah, we so crush the crave. We plan on on the formal uh, or at least feasibility pilot evaluation um, for uh, for um, and for the stop vaping challenge. Really built in there is uh, a, a, a research study where we are looking to understand the processes of, of vaping cessation better. That uh, ultimately one of the major issues is that we don't know very much about this is a new phenomenon and we need to learn more about the processes. And so we are we would like to use the stop vaping mm -hmm. challenge as part of that uh, to help us understand what that what is what that's like uh, for youth who are going through that. Um, we plan specifically for not to 20 or not from 2050 to start with a, 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 a short and, and brief uh, uh, advertising campaign that uh, will will help us understand uh, the interest and use of of, uh, of the site but are really looking um, as part of this webinar for other people who might be interested in helping us promote and uh, uh, share and or adapt as, as they wish. Okay, great. Thank you, Michael. Um, our, uh, this is the time to post any further questions or comments. Uh, there's been an active chat today, so uh, that's always wonderful. Um, and uh, if there isn't anything, do any of the panelists have any last words for the audience? Yeah, just first, there was a question, two questions. So one was from Apeksha, I hope you pronounced your name right, uh, this, uh, about the sharing any papers or um, publications with the group, and especially like for the images that we showed today, if we might be able to provide um, some context for them to share those. So that was more request. And then Daryl uh, had asked if um, the team who developed Quash uh, had any connections with us uh, or, or our app development. Um, so the, um, the answer to the first is yes, please uh, email Cheryl uh, and she can uh, share whatever is shareable. Um, and uh, we are very open to sharing and uh, just want to get the word out and um, bring everybody on board. So absolutely. Um, and yes, um, um, two of us from this team um, have been involved with Quash, um, and there's been a lot of 
um, dialogue back and forth, learning from one another. Uh, it's a great project and uh, we are fairly supportive. Uh, it is aimed, or at least was intended to be aimed largely at a younger uh, uh, group of people, uh, whereas um, these apps are generally for the older youth and also for young adults, but um, there's certainly overlap and uh, um, we are delighted to promote Quash um, as well. Okay, thank you everybody. Um, it's been a pleasure. And um, uh, our next webinar for Motru, by the way, is on November the 2nd, and it is marking five years to the Canada's National Endgame Initiative. Uh, we had a summit exactly five years ago at Queen's University. And uh, we will have uh, Jane Philpott with us, who was then the Minister of Health, um, and uh, several um, big speakers uh, from across Canada to try and rekindle uh, interest in the uh, tobacco and games. So thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.